When we used to live in Nashville, one of our friends, a family that was in our small group um, from church, they went through the heartache of burying not just one baby, but two. They both were carriers of a particular gene and I thought the first funeral was hard, but the second funeral was even harder. Darling little boy lived only about six months. And in our small group, we took turns. Um, you know, we would do the laundry or clean the house or make meals. And, and then one night it was my turn just to make dinner for the family. And so I took it over and the husband and the son were in the kitchen, but I asked um, where the wife was and they said, oh, she's upstairs in the baby's room. So I set up the meal for them and, and the husband and son sat down and started to eat, but I went upstairs and knocked on the baby's room door. There's no answer, so I just kind of gently opened it and there was my friend sitting on the floor holding a little pair of his baby shoes. And you know what, all I did was I sat beside her on the floor and we wept for an hour. I didn't say a single word. Because what do you say? What do you say when somebody is walking through something unthinkable? And sometimes we think, well, what would be the right scripture verse? And there's times when you just know that God has given you a word for someone. You know, a scripture that will just absolutely, you know, speak to where they are. But don't ever be afraid of just the gift of your presence. To share, it's, I call it the companionship of suffering, of entering into something with someone so that they know that they are not alone.